Hello Puppet fans! And welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we will learn about the Puppet Declarative Approach and Idempotence feature. Declarative programming means writing code to describe what the program should do as opposed to how it should do it. One describes what needs to happen, the minutiae for making it so are left to the system. Puppet, for instance, is declarative language, the sysadmin describes a desired end state and the tool attempts to reach it. Its domain-specific language, DSL, is used for creating high-level descriptions of desired server state, as opposed to instructions and actions to be carried out. Puppet manifests that contain configuration information can be used any number of times to achieve the same results. If the desired end state has already been reached, Puppet simply ignores the item in question. Users need only worry about the desired end state of the system to be configured, not the sequence of steps required to get there. As I mentioned for a configuration state to be achieved no matter the conditions, the configuration language must avoid describing the actions required to reach the desired state. Instead, the configuration language should describe the desired state itself, and leave the actions up to the interpreter. Language that declares the final state is called declarative. Rather than writing extensive imperative code to handle every situation, it is much simpler to declare what you want the final state to be. In other words, instead of including dozens of lines of comparison, the code reflects only the desired final state of the resource, a user account, in this example. As you can see, the code is not much more than a simple text explanation of the desired state. A user named Joe user should be present, a home directory for the user should be created, and so on. It is very clear, very easy to read. Exactly how the user should be created is not within the code, nor are instructions for handling different operating systems. Declarative language is much easier to read, and less prone to breakage due to environment differences. Puppet was designed to achieve consistent and repeatable results. You describe what the final state of the resource should be, and Puppet will evaluate the resource and apply any necessary changes to reach that state. Good Puppet manifests are written with declarative programming. Instead of defining exactly how to make changes, in which you must write code to test and compare the system state before making that change, you instead declare how it should be. It is up to the puppet agent to evaluate the current state and apply the necessary changes. Puppet supports item potency which makes it unique. In Puppet, one can safely run the same set of configuration multiple times on the same machine. In this flow, Puppet checks for the current status of the target machine and will only make changes when there is any specific change in the configuration. Like in this example if user is not present in Puppet first run it will create a Joe user and after if even if you run it multiple time Puppet will not do anything as it only check the desired state. So idempotency is important, as in Puppet Master Agent model. Agent check master in every 30 minutes or so to get the catalog. And without item potency master will not check the current state of the system and will try to reapply the changes. And and we don't want puppet to reapply the changes if system is having the desired state. So item potency plays an important role in puppet. Okay, so in this section we learned about the declarative model and item potency feature. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have time feel free to move on to next lecture.